best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Wayne Kelly, our referee, scheduled for 10. All right, gentlemen, we're boxing under the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. I expect a clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Shake hands, come out boxing at the bell. Good luck. Here on Long Island, we're using the New York State rules. The three knockdown rule is in effect. There is no standing eight count. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. In the case of an accidental foul, we will go to the scorecards after half of those rounds are complete. Clarence Untouchable Vincent, the bronze medalist, 10-0. Keep him up, keep him up. In his second year, coming off that class of 2000, Martinez, just two more fights with a year and a quarter more experience. Martinez coming off a knockout loss in his last fight. The early rounds are very, very important to see if he can get his confidence together, get his legs under him, find out that he's okay after not being okay the last time he was in the ring. Well, he says he got the nickname because the Black Rooster, because the Black Rooster always comes forward when he's fighting, and so far that's been the case in the first minute of round number one, Teddy. Vincent with the big advantage with hand speed and versatility. Vincent can stay inside with his shoulder. He can fight with you inside, but he can do something Martinez can't do, Joe. He can move. He can make the ring big. He has options. Those options are separating him right now, early on, against Martinez. Martinez needs a little cooperation to be effective. Looks like his forte is that left hook. He needs you in front of him. He needs Vincent to stop using his legs. One way to do that is to bang the body of Vincent when he gets close, which Martinez did not do that. Take those legs away. Take the air out of the tires. Vincent with a left hand that connects flush. Vincent's showing all his skills right here. He's not just fast. He's a talented fighter technically. He's showing you he knows how to fight. He can go inside. He can get out before you return fire. He can counter. Look for his counter left hook, his counter right hand. You walk forward. He's going to spring a trap on you. Vincent has a perfect guy in front of him so far to show his ability. He has a big body shot. You have a game guy walking in like Martinez is, and you have a fast fighter like Vincent. Well, the fast fighter can really show his wares. He's doing it right now. The Olympian, Vincent. I expect Vincent to go a little bit more to the body, Joe, because he sees that Martinez is game. He sees he has a fairly good chin. No better way to slow down a guy that has a good chin than to bang him underneath. Clarence Vincent, the bronze medalist, able to take advantage of that straight-ahead style. special Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas two Olympians with us today and you're taking a look at Clarence Vincent the bronze medalist from the 2000 games in Sydney All right, Vincent landed 23 of 77 countering Martinez as he came straight forward. He landed a big body shot in that first round. And Teddy, that's something you think this is going to key in. I think both fighters are going to for different reasons. Martinez is going to try to go to the body to slow down Vincent, take those legs away from him. Oh, 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 oh. Vincent's going to go to the body because Martinez has a good chin. Referee Wayne Kelly wants him to go to the body, but just a little higher. I pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
if Martinez is going to be effective and have a chance to win tonight, he has to change things up a little bit. Can't just walk straight in. Vincent is too talented, knows what to do technically too well, and he's too fast to just walk in. Martinez must jab his way in. Not walking like that. He'll walk into kind of all night. He jabs in the gate, Vincent, a little bit. Give him something to think about. Blow the windshield a little bit. He can't just stand on the fence. Martinez and Vincent both connecting on counter shots there. I see a little adjustment by Martinez right there. It was smart what he did. He tried to time Vincent. And he did with the left hand. Yes, he did with the left hook. He's staying in the pocket. He knows he's not quick enough to live inside with Vincent, just matching speed for speed. So what he's trying to do is time Vincent as Vincent throws or when Vincent's done throwing. The only problem with that is you're going to probably have to take a little extra to be able to make that work. But right there, you can see Martinez is trying his best to be stalwart about it. He's going to stay in the pocket a little bit, try to catch something maybe on the arms, stay there, and fire right back and hope to find Vincent posing a little. What are you waiting on, baby? Cut him off. Again, Martinez, Joe, walking in without the jab. No good. And you see why right there. Nothing coming back at Vincent. Nothing making Vincent think. If you can't jab on your way in, there's another idea. Right? You know what it is? The second cousin to a jab. The feint. Use the feint a little bit. Let him think something's coming. Just as useful at times. Especially with someone like Vincent, who's looking to counter, who's very quick. Fainham makes him make move a little too soon. Then you can time him. Or Vincent and Martinez. Two of ten in the back. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yep, very good, Brian. Yep, that's what we were just at the counter left. Kind of left talk. Staying in the pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stuff yeah. 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 Hold the yeah. 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 Bottom right hand corner, you see right here, Vincent getting off punching, but Martinez stays in the pocket and he's looking to time Vincent. He's looking bing, left hook, trying to catch Vincent as he's punching. He knows he's too fast for him if he waits until later. And here in round number three, he connected with a right hand to start things off. Angel Martinez was able to pick up his pace in that second round, landing 12 of 43, but still Clarence Vincent, the busier fighter, threw 91, landed 24, including 53 jabs. Martinez still walking straight in. But one thing I like is very game. Here's a guy who's lost two of his last three, been knocked out his last fight. Very game guy. Hasn't been deterred at all. Still keeps walking forward. I don't like the fact that he's walking straight in, not moving his head, and without a jab. The one thing that I do like about Martinez, he's getting inside close and he's looking to time Vincent. He can't match the speed, but timing sometimes can negate speed. Teddy, is it natural for a guy that likes to come straight forward to try to change his mind to think about it? I don't know. I would say no. Because if he was thinking about countering, he wouldn't be coming straight forward. He'd be going out. Countering means to elicit support. Get somebody to help you. Come at you. And then turn it around. He's making his way in. Not doing enough on the way in for what you'd like to see. He should be coming in behind the jab. I want to keep a lot of the fire that's coming at him. 
it would keep it away from him. It would neutralize a lot of the incoming from Vincent. Keep him busy a little bit. Make him think a little bit. Instead of pot shot on the way in. So this is what you don't like. Martinez finally gets inside real good. He's got to work inside. We already know he can't win on the outside. He's not quick enough. Clarence Vincent letting the hands go a little bit here in the final minute of round number three. And coming over the top of the right hand. There's a jab coming from Martinez. A lot of that incoming from Vincent would not be coming in. There's the time that took again. Now Martinez needs to do two things, Joe. Put the right hand behind it. He's already shown he can't hurt Vincent with one left hook. Maybe later on he'll catch him perfect. And maybe he will hurt him. But right now, one left hook's not doing the trick. He needs to put the right hand right behind it. So when he times him, put two instead of one. ESPN Sunday boxing special from Long Island. Clarence Vincent, the bronze medalist from the 2000 games against Pancho Martinez. Through three rounds, Vincent 256 to Martinez is 144. And of course, he's doubled him up on landing. Clarence Vincent comes from the streets of Washington, D.C., where he got a quick education. He lost his brother and his cousin to the violence of the inner city at age 14. He said boxing truly became his freedom and liberty in life. And he's dedicated himself, made the U.S. Olympic team, and now forging ahead in his pro career. This is 11th fight. It's a great example of why boxing socially is so important. It saved young men. It has saved Vincent. He's very honest, very quick to talk about it. He used to carry the obituaries of his cousin and brother in his gym bag when he went to the amateur fights, just to make sure that he did not forget where he wanted to go. He was locked up at age 14. He said it was the only time he's ever seen his mother cry, and he doesn't want to see it again. I like what I'm seeing here. Not only skill, speed, great ability from Vincent, but that fight is temperament. He's not shy to get in there and engage either. He's making an appealing fight. He's got speed Martinez on the outside, but he's engaging Martinez as a real fighter too, making it entertaining for the people watching. A short moments ago, doubling up with that left hand nicely. Lead right connects. He's taking what's given him for the most part. That's, the That's what you've wanted to see now for three rounds, and it works well for Martinez, who is the taller man, four inches taller, and finally taking advantage of that left hand here in round number four. You're going to walk in. You have to walk in behind cover. You're going to go rob a bank. You want somebody to give you cover, wouldn't you? You want somebody to, you know, keep the people, the guards busy. Keep them occupied a little bit with something, a diversion. Well, the diversion for a fighter coming in like Martinez is the jab. You come in with no diversion, you get picked up coming in with the quick combos of Vincent. Vincent's taking what's given him. Vincent has stayed to his mindset, banging that body. Again, 
right from the beginning, he knows he has a steel chin guy. Or at least a real stubborn guy in front of him. He wants to soften him downstairs. There's a good and bad about that. The good is his soften him up a little. The bad is it means he has to stay close. Gives Martinez a chance to get something more. Clarence Vincent scoring well. Final moments around four. Snuck a right uppercut in there. Sator and Teddy Atlas. Glad you can be with us for this ESPN Sunday boxing special. A real treat today as we check in on the progress of two members from the class of 2000 Team USA. We're in the black and gray. This is the bronze medalist, the bantamweight Clarence Vincent. He is 10 and 0 with five knockouts today, taking on a very game Poncho Martinez. As if Martinez hasn't had enough problems with this very talented, skillful Vincent. This is his first fight on the East Coast. All his fights prior have been in Texas and Mexico. These people make him travel, and they make him travel to meet somebody like this. Fast, good fighter. I'd rather stay home. No vacation being in there with Clarence Vincent. He has the speed, he has the polished skills, and at times he shows flashes of power. He has the trainer, Adrian Davis, who's doing a great job of making sure that those skills are brought out in the pro world. Vincent looking to load up on a roundhouse right. Now playing some games against the ropes with Martinez. Here, Martinez is going to have to get on him a little bit for what just happened or didn't happen a moment ago. Now this is a statement, Teddy, of Clarence Vincent and what he thinks and how much control he feels he has now that he has seen four rounds of Pancho Martinez. But Martinez got close what he wanted to do. Had Vincent for a moment standing still. Inside, Martinez didn't do anything. Teddy, there's a great example of what you've been telling us. Standing in front, not willing to throw that jab and take it. That's a perfect example. Look at the skills of Vincent. That's the perfect example of being the aggressor, but not close to being the effective aggressor. Martinez walking in, but not effectively at all. Teddy, when you see a round where a fighter is so willing to show off his superior athleticism and skills and maybe not respect the offense of his opponent, how do you think the judges read it? Very simply, the man who's landing, the man who's throwing, he's ahead. Right now, anybody could judge this round. There's only one guy pitching. The other guy's catching. Does that mindset start to play in as the fight goes on if they see one fighter that feels like he has so much control of his physical gifts over another when they fight a more traditional round of exchanging? Well, certainly, you should go, like they say, one day at a time, one round at a time. He's halfway through and he's in total control. Clarence Vincent looking strong. I'm glad you said it, because what I was saying was, you know, they see a round like that where he's disrespecting this guy, and then they assume that the rest of the thing goes a certain way. They don't look to see each round individually. That's what the point I was trying to make, and you, you clarified that. Bottom right-hand corner, this is what you call serving it up on a silver platter or a silver canvas. Martinez just walking in, catching. Vincent just able to get off, take what's given him. Take the round, so far taking the fight. Sixth round between Vincent and Martinez. When you look at the punches thrown by round, please note the fifth round. 
where Pancho Martinez only landed four. Teddy, he only threw 14. Frustration setting in. One of the reasons why Martinez's punch count is dropping. He's afraid to throw. When he throws, it gets counted, so he gets a little tentative. He gets tentative. Vincent gets off first, tattoos him. So what happens? You get a lower punch count. You get a guy who's frustrated. Guy is not sure of what to do. Keep it clean. Come on, let's go. Speed and skills. In this case of Vincent, would do that to an opponent. Teddy's scorecard through five rounds. Clear cut shutout for the bronze medalist. Perfect foil, Martinez is for Vincent. To not only so far win tonight, but as we said earlier, to display skills. With a straight right comes Pancho Martinez. That's what you get for clowning. Exactly. Vincent clowning around, showboating a little bit. Martinez that time did not wait, was not tentative. He got off. Well, Martinez was, well, Vincent was standing there, fooling around with his gloves, twirling his gloves around. He was a stationary target. Martinez did the right thing. Well, he went to score on that fifth round. He went through that whole fifth round without answering that time. Martinez did the wrong thing right there. He got inside, he went into his turtle. That old Archie Moore, the old Mongoose, the great, great light heavyweight champion. Crossed his arms over. George Foreman made that famous later on for defensive purposes. But Martinez, while he did that, he gave Vincent time to get off and then get out. Martinez should be thinking about one thing when he gets inside, not the turtle defense, Joe. He should be thinking about letting those hands go, trying to hit something, which he has not done too well tonight. It's deteriorating here for Martinez. And as the fight goes on, he's been less and less confident of his ability to do so as the punch stats have shown. He's not only walking in with no jab, now he's following Vincent around. No cutting of the ring. And leaning forward, setting himself up for an uppercut here in round number six. Yeah, 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 that was it, Brian. That's good. Yeah, fine. The hell? Ain't much else to show during this fight. So one sided. <laughs> A hundred more total? hundred more what? Clarence Vincent can get, give a lot of lessons to young fighters of what to do. Here's one of what not to do. Showboat here, you get caught by your opponent. Well, Pancho Martinez is used to clowns though, Teddy. Specifically, Ronald McDonald. He's a manager at a McDonald's down in Laredo, Texas. He gets up 5 o'clock in the morning, goes in, works a shift right through the afternoon, jogs, then goes in and trains at 6 o'clock at night. Dedicated to both jobs. The punches through round number six. Clarence Vincent has landed almost 100 more than Pancho Martinez, and that's through six rounds of action. So far tonight, Martinez has been Mike Piazza. And Vincent has been Randy Johnson. A lot of fastballs, a lot of fastballs from Vincent. Here's Vincent tempting that uppercut. Martinez a little more willing here in the seventh round. 
this fight has gotten to the point where it's not a matter, Joe, of what Benson can do anymore. It's a matter of how much does he want to do. Right there, Benson threw a good left hook to the body. He should have stayed in there. That's a point where you think oh, you need no. to get away from Step the back. slower guy. The guy whose only chance is to catch you if you stay in front. That's a point where Benson should have stayed in there and threw another hook. By pulling out, he pulled out right into a punch. Martinez has picked up his pace here in round number seven, lunging in with a combination. He landed a good body shot a little while ago, but Vincent returned the favor. There's a left hand by Poncho. Martinez's well, best chance now is to time Vincent stepping out with the left hook. Get in close, force Vincent to go straight out, and try to time him as he goes back with the left hook. And as we said, if he's really going to pull this fight out of the fire, and at this point, he probably needs at least a couple knockdowns, if not a knockout. He needs to put two punches together, not one. Vincent has shown he can handle one shot. Right here, that's where Martinez must catch Vincent stepping back. He doesn't want to jab his way in. He's not working steady enough when he does get those moments when Vincent stands in front of him. He has to look for clear spots where he can catch him with something clean. I think Martinez's only shot is to time Vincent going back. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday night, Kevin Frazier, Sean Elliott, and Tim Legler bring you through a full slate of NBA games with exclusive in-progress highlights and news. See live highlights from the seven-game NBA schedule this Tuesday night. The NBA Fast Break Tuesday on ESPN2 at 9 Eastern. For more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. Well, there's the man they call untouchable, Clarence Vincent, 24-year-old from Washington, D.C. This is 11th pro fight. Teddy, there's been talk about the level of competition he has faced. Here in Pancho Martinez, has has been a good experience so far for him. He's getting rounds. Right now, he's going to have a chance of going where he's never gone before, which is always important psychologically, he's not physically, too, to know you can go 10 rounds. Vincent, up until tonight, has never been passed eight rounds. So he gets a chance to put that in his pocket, get that out of the way. But it's still. I think once he gets past this fight, if everything keeps going as spectacularly as it's been going so far today, he needs to start to step up his grade of opposition, the level of talent. Some of the yellow Olympian from the 2000 games, they've stepped up their opposition level a little bit more. I think it's time after this, Vincent will possibly have gone 10 rounds. If we get past these next two rounds. It'd be time to step up the level a little bit. Vincent can handle it. Seems like there's such a variance between the different Olympians, and some guys take the slow road, and some guys like Francisco Bajada, maybe the road was a little too quick. You never know which way it's going to go, but when you do press that gas pedal, you have to be ready for it. Maybe with Bajada, the road wasn't too quick. Maybe what was too quick was the way that he treated him at the beginning. They said that they anointed him the king before he had done anything. His head got too big. Big side of bonus too. His weight went up too. He didn't take things seriously. He thought things were just going to come easily for him. Maybe it was good they put him in that fight to teach him something. So he learns now he has a chance to overcome those improper habits or improper attitudes early on while there's still time to correct it and still become a real good fighter. You can't take these Olympians. They've had over 100 fights, most of these guys. 
and spoil them and baby them and coddle them too much. Then they forget what they need to do to become better. They start assuming and taking things for granted, thinking everything's going to be easy. Now today we have seen the athleticism and the speed and the skills of the bronze medalist Bantamweight, Clarence Vincent. At moments, we have still seen where there is work to be done. And in a little bit, we will check in as to who Teddy thinks is on course from that class of 2000. Teddy's list of the current players from that class of 2000. We'll take a look. Vincent able to do anything he wants to do right now. Two to go from Long Island. Put a little water and rinse him down a little bit, man. Deep breath. Get the water, Juice. Rinse him down. Spit in all that heavy air. Right on that. Just keep right on. Just rinse him on your team. Now, what the water? Be cool. Be cool. Look good. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Look good, baby. Look good. Stay low. Don't throw the overhand. Nothing wild. Stay low. You feeling good? Keep your right hand straight up. That's what's keep burning. Straight right hand. Don't elect the body. Okay. Body killing. Okay. Right 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 Clarence Vincent. His defense as late has been solid for the past four rounds. Uh, he worn down Pancho Martinez has not landed more than nine punches in any of those last four rounds. Eight connected in that last round, the eighth. Well, Teddy, you said it for Clarence Vincent. It's all winning experience. This is 11th pro fight, and this right now, the first time he's been past eight rounds. No man's land. Very important. He will get a chance under his own pace. His own liking. He will get a chance to go those 10 rounds, put it in the, put it away, put it in the bag, so to speak. Psychologically know that he's done that already, been there, done that. And he's doing it, as we said, under his own terms. So the next time he's in with a better fight and he might have to go 10 rounds, that's out of the way. He won't have that weighing heavy on his mind going into the fight. Martinez is already in no man's land a couple rounds already. He had never been past six rounds before today. Lead right hand followed up by a left by Vincent. Once again, Martinez is only chance. He refuses to jab his way in, refuses to bang to the body when he gets close, refuses to cut the ring down, just walks forward. His only chance is to tie right there. The left up to tie and Vincent. And Vincent is throwing, maybe getting a little greedy. And Martinez caught him and got his attention there. He did it earlier in this fight. And here he has come to life in the ninth round, countering with the left again. That's his best shot. Now what he has to do is put the right hand with it. We said this earlier. We've been saying this. We've been forecasting this. The only chance Martinez has is to time the quicker Vincent in mid-punch. As he's falling, as he starts to step back, time him with the left hook. But Martinez might have missed his moment there, Joe, because he didn't put the right hand with it. But you have to give credit for Martinez, a guy who clearly was worn down the past four rounds. He didn't give up hope, still stayed in there. Countered with the left, and it rallied midway through this ninth round. And we might have just seen that hope of a beautiful sunrise, and now it's becoming a sunset. It might be gone. Way behind on the scorecards is Pancho Martinez. But he's been scoring big on pride all day. Again, Martinez, he did it once, he can do it twice. He's gonna have one more round to get close, land the left hook, and put the right hand with it. Who knows, we will see. Tenth round coming up.
He's gotten caught two times. Right on that. Yeah. Amazing. We were right on that, just as we were saying. You were right on that. That was very good. <laughs> you are very good. Here's another look at that moment, that big left hook. Here's Martinez taken as he's been taken, but he stays in the pocket and he times Vincent. But the right hand was a little late. Here's another look at it. He's taking, but at this point, he'll take a couple to give one. And that was a good one, a good left hook, but the right hand was just a little late. And to Vincent's credit, after he got hit, he moved his head just a little bit so he wouldn't get hit the next one. That's the mark of a good fighter. And Teddy, there's that natural pendulum motion when you throw the left hook to naturally come back with the right, but in the midst of that natural motion, there was that little hesitation from Pancho Martinez there. But still, that's true. He clearly woke up Clarence Vincent. But what it's done, it's done a couple of things. It's given him hope. Even though it's only one round, very late, we know that. Nobody has to tell all people out there that are watching. But it at least gives a little inspiration, a little fuel in the tank, in the tank for Martinez this round to say, I did it last round, let me see if I can do it again. And it goes back to the question I asked you in the middle of this fight when Vincent, in his mind, thought he had things in total control. I asked you about the level of competition and what does he get out of this opponent? I think maybe he did learn something today. That's a good point. He's getting the rounds. Before this, he was just getting the rounds on his belt. That's all. That round became a teaching round. You're right. Don't get cocky. Don't assume anything. Don't stand there admiring your work. Because it's not over, like Yogi Berra said, until it's over. Well, this is what's so great, folks, about watching the Olympians as they progress through and work their way up that pro ladder. You see the good, you see the bad, but you see them develop every step of the way. And it's been great to watch the likes of Clarence Vincent and Miguel Cotto and Brian Valerio and Calderon and many of the guys who will be featuring here on Friday night fights and Tuesday night fights in our ESPN specials to watch this class of 2000 grow into the pro ranks every step of the way. Vincent right now is navigating himself around his opponent using the ring and reading his opponent like a roadmap. When his opponent reaches in, he counters. And he covers up, he makes right. sure he's not leaving any doors open. Or any windows of opportunity open. And then if he sees his opponent, like right now, move his feet a little bit too much and not set the punch, then you see right there. Then you see Vincent, he'll sit down and he'll get off. He's reading his opponent like a map. He's taking what's being given to him. Again, Martinez not jabbing his way in, and that's why he just ate a right hand. Game, but not effective. Martinez, all day long. Punch a little low there. Vincent turned his back. Martinez not willing to run after him. Cups to the body. Final flurry. Vincent has 10 rounds in the bank. Excuse me, counter left hook by Poncho in the ninth round. But the rest of the fight was all Clarence Vincent, landing 246 to Martinez's 94 punches. As for Teddy Atlas's scorecard. 100 to 91, you gave it an even round in the ninth round where Martinez came on in the middle portion of that round. Now for the official decision, let's go up to Sandy Reddick. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision as follows. Judge Tony Paolello scored the fight 100 to 90. Judge Fred Yusey scored the fight 99 to 91, and Judge John McKay scored the fight 98-92 for the winner by unanimous decision, Clarence Vinson. So a difference of two rounds on the scorecards among the judges, but nonetheless, 
Clarence Vincent gets his 11th win. He's 11-0, his first 10-rounder.